Hi, welcome back to another video. Today I will be talking about the books I read in February. If you're new here, my name is Alex, my pronouns are he, him, and this is my channel, Pucks and Paperbacks, where I like to talk about queer books. I read four books in the month of February, so let's talk about them. The first book I read in February was Know My Name by Chanel Miller and I was so glad I read this book. I loved it so much. It is beautifully written. I have a whole notes app page of just quotes from the book. I listened to it on audio and I would highly recommend the audiobook. I will mention the trigger warnings here. There are trigger warnings for sexual assault, police brutality, death, school shooting, and misogyny. This is Chanel Miller's memoir and she was the victim of sexual assault from the Brock Turner case. If you don't know, this is the famous case of sexual assault on a Stanford campus. Chanel went there for a party with her sister and she ended up in a hospital bed and she actually was saved by two Swedish men and I just loved this book. It was a angry book. You are really going to get angry at it. I advise to check the trigger warnings because this is not a light book by any means. Chanel recounts her whole experience from before the assault happened to after the trial and all of that and she is just a beautiful writer. I really appreciated how beautifully written this book was. I have a whole notes app page of quotes because I just couldn't stop. I was like, I love this and it's definitely a kind of book that I want to own so I can reread it and tap it because it is beautifully written and I'm so glad I read it because I've seen it hyped a lot and I never really got around to reading it but I had it on hold at my library. The hold came in and I was like, okay, I guess I'll do it. I want an audiobook and here we are. I think this is one of my favorite books that I've read, like one of my favorite memoirs that I've read recently. It's definitely going to be on one of my favorite nonfiction lists for sure because it was just such a important book. It's going to make you angry. It's going to make you very sad and it is not a light book by any means. It's a very hard read. I really liked how she was able to connect all of her experiences to her present situation. And you really get to just see how it's affecting her, it's affecting her family, it's affecting her boyfriend, her friends, and just the way her mind is. And I just think that this is such an important book to read. Her feelings are all in this book and I think it's super important because if you don't know Chanel this is her first time coming out publicly about her identity. She is saying she is Chanel Miller. She is the woman who was sexually assaulted by Brock Turner on a Stanford campus behind a dumpster. One buzzword I would say about this book is it is notable. It is a very notable story. This is Chanel's first time coming out publicly and just sharing her story and saying she is Chanel Miller because when the story dropped she actually sent her speech to BuzzFeed under the name Emily Doe and so we didn't really have anything but her alias and this is her coming out about it and it was just a beautiful story. It's heartbreaking but a very important one. If it's not too heavy of a book for you to consume I highly recommend it and I highly recommend the audiobook. It was fantastic and it is a book that I will never forget. I did write a Goodreads review so I'll have it linked down below if you want to hear more of my thoughts but I really thought it was fantastic and I'm so glad I read it. And next I read a disappointing book. I am not giving ratings anymore but if I were to rate this book it would probably be a three and this is The Wedding Date by Jasmine Guillory. <laughs> I'm so sad. <laughs> I'm so sad that I didn't like this. You don't understand. I was so upset. I liked the first half of it. So this is about Olivia Monroe. She gets stuck in an elevator with this man, Drew, in a hotel when she's going to visit her sister, Alexa, who is from Party of Two, and they end up getting stuck in the elevator and he says he's there for his ex-girlfriend's wedding and he's going to be the best man in that wedding. And she's marrying his best friend. And so what happens is 
he doesn't have a date, his date bailed on him, and he asks Olivia if she will go. She says yes, and it's a whole fake dating scheme, and it's really fun in the beginning. In the beginning, it's fun, and then you get to meet Drew, and you hate him. I personally hated him so much, and I'm mad that I did, because I love Jasmine Guillory, and I am so mad that Drew was so annoying. He was just so un insufferable to read, and I'm sad. I'm so sad. <laughs> this is Jasmine Guillory's debut. I'm gonna pick up all of her other books. This did not sway me from not picking her up anymore. This was just a flop, and it's totally fine, but I usually don't really hate books or have like a bad experience with them, and I didn't really have a bad experience with this. It just was really not I don't know, like nothing was really going on in this book. I did read some reviews that said it feels like there's no middle and that's how I feel as well as there wasn't really anything going on in the middle. The first part of the book was so fun at the wedding and all, but then after the wedding it's like what's really the point of the book then because we're being pitched a fake dating. Maybe if the wedding would have been in the middle we would have had a little bit more fun, you know? Basically, I felt like we didn't really have a plot or any character development. It kind of just felt like after the wedding, it was Olivia going to LA to work for the mayor because that was her job. And then Drew is going back to San Francisco and he works as a doctor. It feels like a complicated story and it's complicated to explain. So it just kind of felt like we didn't really have anything going on besides like the characters not really communicating with each other. For instance, we have Olivia like has sex with Drew and then she's like, oh, I think he's gonna break up with me. And then there's also another instance where Drew says he's gonna break up with her. And I'm like, what is going on? Like none of this really makes any sense. And it just doesn't feel like there's a lot of plot. I feel like I liked the side characters better. His friend Carlos, he was the man. I really enjoyed him. Theo, he was so cool, but Drew was insufferable. I was just disappointed. I wish I would have had more fun. It just felt like it was a lot of like sex and not a lot of plot, which I'm fine with because I've read novellas before that have had a lot of like sex heavy content and I'm fine with that. But when I'm being pitched a fake dating, I want a little bit more fake dating. What I liked about Party of Two is that she balances the sex scenes and in here it just felt like they were piling up. So they both go their separate ways because they live in San Francisco and LA and so it's kind of just like a lot of scenes of Olivia going to San Francisco, <laughs> like taking a plane there, going in the airport, going to meet Drew and then vice versa and then it's like they have sex, they eat breakfast and they get like donuts and stuff like that and then fly back home and then them having miscommunication, being like are we together or not, does he like me, I don't know and then none of that really gets resolved until like kind of like the end but just there's a there's too much miscommunication is really what I'm saying here and I was disappointed because Drew was just a very unlikable character. I am actually glad that I had the audiobook because I don't know how it would have been if I read it physically because I really would have DNF'd it but I didn't want to because I own it and I'm like I don't want to do that to myself and I kind of just wanted to know how the end panned out. I was just not impressed and I'm mad. Like honestly I'm mad that I didn't like it because I wanted to. If you saw my February TBR I was so excited to read this because I love Jasmine Guillory and now I'm disappointed. So the proposal will be my next read for Jasmine Guillory and I'm hoping I enjoy it a little bit more because it has sports in it. I know I probably will enjoy it. I did start the audiobook of that in 2021 and so I am just excited to read that. Uh, I don't know. I just was disappointed by this and I will not go on any longer. <laughs> Then I read a picture book that I actually hold in my January book haul and that is That's Betty, The Story of Betty White and I really enjoyed it. Thank you to Macmillan Kids for sending me a copy. I was very impressed and I really enjoyed it. I don't know much about Betty White. I just am not a big like celebrity person. I don't know much about anything. So I really enjoyed this because it is about a boy 
and we actually don't get his name. <laughs> I don't know why we just don't get his name. Uh, he has two dads, which was cool. So this is him learning about Betty White. He has a project in school where he has to do a presentation on a trailblazing woman in history and he picks Betty White and he just learns about all of her achievements and I thought it was really nice. I really enjoyed learning about her because I don't know too much but it was just fun to read and I recommend it especially if you're a teacher or you just have kids or you just like picture books. Highly recommend this and I'll have a link down below for you to pick it up. And the last book I read in February was Concrete Kids by Amara Leon and this is a part of the Pocket Change Collective from Penguin Teen. This is a poetry collection about Amara's life growing up. She grew up in Harlem and she was in foster care and so we really get to see a lot of her experiences and I will say that this is a graphic book so it does talk about death and shooting and trauma so that is a big warning before going into this but the stanzas were beautiful and I really enjoyed it. I loved the metaphor of black boys as butterflies and it talks about concrete kids. Ashley from the Bookish Realm did review this so I'll link her Goodreads review down below and this was just such a great poetry collection. I'm really glad I read it because it does pack a punch. It is very brutal to read but it's beautiful. I really enjoyed it. I read this on the last day of the month and I'm really glad I did because I really enjoyed it. I haven't read poetry in a while. I think the last time I did was November and I really just love poetry. It's one genre that I have begun to love over the years and I just really enjoyed this. This just follows her childhood and her lived experiences and talks about her growing up in Harlem and I really enjoyed this. These were just beautiful poems. I don't really have much more to talk about. I just thought it was really great. It packs a punch. It's graphic and I am just glad that I read it. I don't really know what else to really say about it. I just enjoyed it and I'm glad that I ended out the month with this one. So those were all the books I read in February. Let me know if you've read any of these and what your favorite book you read in February was. If you're new here feel free to hit subscribe and turn on my post notifications so you don't miss a video and if you want to see more bookish things from me you can follow me on Instagram at Pucks and Paperbacks and I have a podcast Reader Rambles where I ramble about bookish topics and I help readers navigate life. I post new episodes every Monday on Spotify, Apple Podcasts and there is a separate YouTube channel for the podcast. All the links are down below. I will see you next time. Bye.